Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? This right here is the 2023 GMC Canyon Denali. And I'm gonna give you guys an outside walk around, an inside tour, and show you pretty much everything you need to know about it. All right guys, so starting off with the exterior design, it's completely new for 2023. It's a whole new platform, whole new setup going on here. So first off on this Denali trim, it's a full chrome front grille because Denali is their more luxurious trim. You do get that treatment. Again, this has the new LED headlight design and these daytime running lights look like they're passing through the front bumper. It's a very nice touch. And this is your daytime running light right here, but the actual headlight unit, if you take a close look, is actually this right there. You get a little nice little GMC branding down there. You come a little lower, you notice there is a fog light actually right here. And this is all paint matched. It's not like this on the other trims. This is unique to the Denali uh, trim. So just keep that in mind. If you take a closer look down here, this is plastic, it is not metal. It's a non-color matched panel. And then you get your recovery hooks down here, which are on all the uh, GMC canyons. So if you take a step back and look at the entire design, we can really take in here are these black trims that look like they're kind of pointing outwards. It's a nice little frame around the grill, really nice touch. And then the hood lines. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up on the white paint as much, but you get really nice hood lines here. It looks great when you're inside the truck as well. So I like that aspect of it too. So it's really feels tough. It's a good design. You come around the side here, we'll take a look at the, uh, the wheel arches and the wheel package. So on this GMC uh, Canyon Denali, you get a 275 60R20 tire. So 20 inch wheel, this looks cool, kind of reminiscent of what you've seen on like the Sierra, which is nice. And uh, it, it is luxurious, but it also is very aggressive. It's a nice tire uh, wheel package. These are Bridgestones, uh, dealer, I don't know how to, I don't know how to say that, but anyway, uh, you get disc brakes up front, and then uh, you do get a uh, non-painted uh, matte black fender. And if you come close, you notice on this amber right here, it has GMC lettering, which is a nice touch. So I like that they did that. Instead of just putting a general reflector, they put that little attention to detail to make that unique to GMC. So uh, these are pretty wide fenders though, and it's the same across the board, whether you get the Elevation, the AT4, AT4X, and this Denali, you get this nice, uh, wider you know front fender and one thing i actually didn't point out earlier is you do get canyon on the top uh mount portion of the led daytime running light coming on the side here you get chrome on the mirror caps they do that because it's the nolly trim you'll get a black on the at4 at4x things like that but this one it is going to be chrome chrome on the door handles you have your keyless go right here press that pull it, it unlocks locks it and then your chrome denali badge this one has a little bit of mud kicked up as it should be um, so you do get that, which is nice. And then down here, you do get steps. Because this is the more luxurious option, you're giving up on that uh, ground clearance, especially that breakover angle because of this uh, running board. And you get little plastic inserts on the front and uh, rear portions, which is, which is a nice touch. Coming around the back here, same thing, same treatment on these back uh, fenders. You do get GMC lettering on the amber. And then the, uh, the back has the matte black uh, fender around it. And the nice thing is this is just one stamped piece. It's not like they had to add an additional fender on the outside. The whole thing is kind of like that wider body design, which is nice. Uh, you're getting it from the sheet metal itself and not like a tacked on fender, which I like. Going down here, uh, you do see that this also has rear disc brakes, um, which is nice. You want to see that. I mean, I think the Tacoma is the only one that still has drum brakes today. Uh, so that will not be the case on this uh, new GMC Canyon. Going to the back, you do get a, you know, not like an aluminum, a polished uh, stainless steel exhaust tip. Uh, it just looks like a standard exhaust tip, which it would have been nice to see that, honestly, if they were to do that, uh, but they didn't, so. It's unfortunate. Uh, but if you come around the back here, take a little step back, you'll see the uh, rear bumper is different. It's gonna be like this on the Denali, the Elevation, and then the AT4. I believe the AT4X has a capped off bumper for a better departure angle. But if you take a look closer, you'll see there's a pattern on this. And this looks like the inverse of what's on like a work boot, right? That like tread pattern right here. Nice, it's grippy. And then on the upper portion right here, it's a more of a lower resolution, I guess a more beefier tread pattern here. And it's nice, it's like less slips resistant when you're kind of getting up here, you know, you're not gonna slip if it's like wet, raining outside and stuff like that. Back here, you this nice stamped piece. So kind of take a step back here, take the whole thing in. You'll see this back part of the, the tailgate GMC, you know, really bold, Denali, really bold, Canyon down here. And then it looks very aggressive. I like how they really put a lot of the design elements into the sheet metal itself. 
uh, to give you a sense of it's like, you know, uh, built, right? Uh, but aside from that, you get your simple, you know, receiver. This one has the tow package, so you can hook up your trailer connectors right there, and then your rear parking sensors. And this is paint matched. It is a Denali, so you expect that. If it wasn't, you'd probably have more of a more plastic down here to protect that, because most likely gonna get hit on a trailer or something like that. Let's open up the truck bed though real quick while we're here. Soft opening. And then you do get a ruler on this uh, tailgate. It's only in inches. They only respect freedom units here. We don't do none of this metric stuff, right? And if I open this up here, I can lift this tab right here and bring up the hidden storage compartment, right? And this one is uh, it's got sealed, so it is watertight. And you do have a drain plug here if you wanna drain out the fluids. Now a dealer option accessory is speakers. You can get added onto this, a kicker sound system. It's like a little Bluetooth. You can put on like the multi-pro tailgate. Uh, same thing here. But what they left here is this threaded insert. And I honestly see that as an opportunity for more DIY people to kind of take advantage of that and install their own little system or they want to put like, you know, uh, things to attach on their equipment to. They can take advantage of that within this little storage compartment. And then if you want to close it up here, I like to push it down here just to make sure I get a nice lock because sometimes it's, you know, that, to make sure that seal is actually fully set in place. But if you look at this truck bed, it is a five foot truck bed. I'm gonna hop in the back here. And then if you take a step back, kind of take the whole thing in, right? You get a bunch of tie downs back here. I'll put the exact number on the screen so you guys can see it because it's a good amount. Up to, I you can get even more added on as an option. Um, right here is a 120 volt, 40 watt outlet. That's nice. And then because it's a Denali trim, you get Denali uh, into the tailgate, uh, to the, sorry, the, the bed liner which is uh, cool. Aside from that, guys, it's a pretty simple truck bed. Not much going on here. You can add accessories. GMC's gonna be selling you a bunch of different, you know, factory options and stuff like that. So if you wanna do, to get more out of your bed, like railing systems, cleats, you can, you can take advantage of that. Right, let's close this up here. It's very light and yeah, it's nice and solid. We didn't talk about the taillights. Taillights are pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Nothing really, you know, fancy there. They are LEDs. Um, I believe from looking at them, right? Um, but yeah, so stepping inside here, let's start off with these seats. These seats are unique to the Denali. Every trim has its own unique seats. And this one has that, you know, more of luxurious, the darker tones, right? So you have this nice, I'm not even sure what the color of it honestly is, but it is like a tannish, nice shade of brown in it. Um, and then this nice uh, diamond stitching in here. And then perforation, because these are <clears throat> heated, excuse me, these are heated and ventilated seats. Then you get Denali embroidered in there. But um, as far as underneath here goes, and like the, the door sill, it's pretty simple, flat plastic. If you go to the doors uh, specifically, you'll see how this nice like wood trim, same diamond stitching treatment on there, and then that two-tone paint. But honestly, the rest of the panel is a simple molded plastic. You get your unlock lock, chrome on the door handle, you punch into that you'll see that and yeah that's pretty much the door it's a pretty simple door nothing too crazy going on there and uh but where it does get kind of a little more more there's more attention to detail is on this dash setup so you get this nice uh wood trim denali with the coordinates on the you know denali mount denali mountain range and then chrome right here going wrapping around the vents which is cool and this two like kind of this is like a flat chrome over here and then this brighter chrome down here. It's, an, it's nice. I feel like they put a lot of effort into that aspect of it, making it stand out enough from the other trim so you feel like you're getting something unique, but also just something that's worth the extra premium that you're paying for this truck. So that's kind of a, a compliment I'll give it. I'm gonna start this thing up. I'm gonna close this door because I wanna talk to you guys about the uh, system. So you can hop in. Okay, cool. So this is a you know Google built-in system similar to what's being used on the GMC Sierra, even like Chevy Silverado, Chevy Colorado. So um, you do got your home menu here. Uh, you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto straight from the factory, which is nice. And you have your Google Assistant as well as Google Maps. And the nice thing about Google Maps is once it is loaded up, oh, this is pre-production guys, so just bear with me here. Uh, I have tested this on like the Chevy uh, Colorado. And it is, it is a lot more responsive than this. And this is, might just be because it's a pre-production unit. Uh, but yeah, once it's, once it's loaded, guys, it, it is really responsive. And I like the fact that it's Google Maps. That's, that's the amazing reason I feel like I most of the time use um, 
Apple CarPlay is because of that. Going on to the car menu here, you have a lot of your controls. Your headlight controls are is this button which always stays up here. And you have your auto on, uh, off, high beam, low beam right there. And you have your door window controls, your drive and park, your vehicle settings. We can show that real quick. Uh, teen driver, which is on every GM car. Buckle to drive and then all your other settings right here. Uh, oops, go back here. You have your heads up display. So the GMC Denali, the Canyon Denali has a heads up display standard. You do have to turn it on and enable it and then it will show up, but this is where you control those settings. And this one does have a camera system. This does not have the full 10 view, 10 camera system that's on the AT4X as underbody cameras. This does not have that, but you get really high quality camera systems or camera views, front, rear, you can even zoom in if you want. And then a uh, full kind of 360, you have your projector lines on or off and then a nice trailer camera view if you'd like to take advantage of that. I like the cameras they use on these systems. They're really nice and, uh, and good. But the, what I like better is the buttons they put underneath here, guys. Heated and ventilated seats. You have your uh, switch gear here for your AC temp controls, which is nice. Physical, you don't have to touch in the screen to do that. Sync, AC buttons, two zone, recirculation, and your fan controls right here, right? Uh, but if you want, I believe I could go into home and you can control it from a touchscreen. So if you want to be, you know, like new, cool, and hip, you can control that from here if you'd like. So you have options, you have physical buttons, which I prefer, and then you get a touch buttons if you wanna do that. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, center gauge cluster display. Um, I'll, I'll grab it actually. So in the middle guys, it is a full uh, edge to edge center screen, which is really nice in this Denali trim. This one has a lot of telemetry on it. You can use a steering wheel to control a lot of the bits here. Um, you have your cruise control here, you have your different menus you can go through uh, on this side of the steering wheel. You get Denali on the steering wheel, which is nice, but um, I think it's a nice resolution, really cool graphics uh, in there. Oh, this is right here is your drive mode selector, and when I go to turn it, you notice off the bat, your center screen changes. You have off-road mode, your tow haul mode, terrain, normal, and then off-road again. And it's cool, you have these different, you know, scenes you can get into. If I go into normal, right here, so what else do you get? Uh, in this drive mode selector, right inside of it, is the uh, transfer case controls. So you have your auto, two high, four high, and four low. On the Denali trim, you do not get a rear locker up here, so if you come up top, you'll see you just have your all your windows down, your auto start stop, your hazards, uh, lane keep, and then your auxiliary switch. On the AT4X, you'll have your uh, rear and front locker here, so just to keep that in mind. Coming down here, you do get your, you know, your park brake, you have your cup holders, nice little slot to put your keys that fits in there, or your wallet, if that's thin enough to fit in there. Uh, but if you're buying this truck, you probably have a very fat wallet because this thing does cost a pretty penny. I'll put the price on this specific model up here. Uh, this one does have a, you know, leather wrapped uh, center console. It is uh, nice and like, I like the fact that it holds its position. It's not like it's flopping around and stuff. Um, and you get this little tray here and nice little storage compartment in there with a 12 volt. So no USB-C ports in here. You just get this uh, 12 volt outlet, right? The only two USB ports are up here. So um, let's, uh, let's hop in the back and show you guys the, the back seats on this truck. All right, so the back seats, the nice thing about this is it gets a similar treatment to the front seat. So if you take a look at the seat backs, you also get that diamond stitching right here. Yeah, you also get perforation. These aren't heated seats though, so just keep that in mind. You do get the perforation, but they're not heated. Uh, one thing I do wanna note is you do have some armrests, but there's no like tab to pull onto. I wish they did that. Um, just would have been nice to have from an ergonomic standpoint, but it is really well padded and it's nice and thick. What isn't nice and thick though, is this little baby center headrest. I think it's kind of hilarious how small this thing is. Uh, it looks kind of weird. They could have made it a little bigger. I'm sure it's probably like the, the bare minimum they could have done there, but that's just something I wanted to point out. And you get your sliding rear glass window, which is nice. Uh, these seats also, they do fold up. You got to lift this lever here, fold up 60-40. You do have this little plastic, you know, housing in here. So it's not like an insane amount of extra space you get, but it is something. Uh, and then it just drops down pretty easily. And then the back has a uh, tiny little vents, USB A and C. And then this one has a wall outlet back here. So I just keep that in mind. And then you do get a doormat pocket on the passenger side, but not, oh, actually I lied. You get them on both sides. I thought the Colorado didn't have it on both sides. So that's why I assumed it didn't. 
I looked and I said, now I see here. So now I'm embarrassing myself. I'm sorry. Um, you do get it on both behind the driver and the passenger. It might be because it's a Denali. It might be because of the GMC Canyon. I cannot confirm or deny this right now because I've not done enough research to make that decision. So um, those are the back seats. If you go to the door panel real quick, uh, you'll see it's, it's nice. There's some good treatment there. You get that two-tone uh, leather, the stitching up top, and then the speaker grill underneath. But since I didn't talk about the speakers real quick, let me, let me mention that real quick. So this does have a Bose sound system uh, all throughout as an option on the GMC Denali. So it's a good sound system. Uh, we're gonna be not showing it in this video because of copyright issues, which you can't do that. So yeah, enough about talking points in this car. Let's actually get this thing uh, going on the road and talk about how it drives. All right guys, so I know I said I wasn't, I thought the, so I know I thought the center gauge cluster display is based on the drive mode. Uh, the way you actually change the views is via this button right here. It's on the bottom right hand side of the steering wheel. You press that and then your uh, gauge cluster display will change. You have a very simple view right here. And then you also have a kind of center tachometer. With, and if I press it again, I get a more traditional gauge cluster display with your speedometer on the left, tachometer on the right, and trip information in the middle. You can kind of pan through those different menus. And then you get that Google Maps view, which is really cool. Uh, full screen, really takes advantage of the fact that it has Google built in. And then you get your full tele telemetry, telemetry uh, gauge cluster display with your pitch, your roll, your compass. That's more of like for off-roading and stuff. So I like that one button easily change into, you don't have to go into any menus or switch any drive modes. So I actually think that's, that's nicer because everyone has different preferences on what they want and you don't have to commit to a drive mode to have a certain set of information or you don't have to dig into a menu. So, but yeah, uh, we just started taking this on the road and initial impressions is it's comfortable. It's, these, this does not have like the multi mag dampers or anything. So we're not commenting on that in this Denali trim. And this is supposed to be more of the luxurious uh, trim. Um, but this is the first one we're getting into as far as driving. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and I'm not sure which power output this has for the 2.7 liter. Um, I would imagine it's the high power output, uh, 2.7 liter with 310 horsepower, 430 pound foot of torque. Uh, we'll use the butt dyno to find out real quick, just kind of getting on here. I got a good amount of power. It's the transmission's kind of figuring out, but I'm also not like fully gunning it here because we got some traffic and these are, these are roads that we are exploring. I don't want to be, uh, upsetting the authorities, you know? So, uh, but overall, I mean, it's a, it's a truck at highway speeds. We're probably gonna hear some wind noise, but like I mentioned, when we were talking about the exterior styling, if you look out into the hood, you see those lines, it gives you a nice kind of outward facing view of the, of the vehicle outside the windshield. So that's nice. And we didn't even mention this does have a panoramic sunroof with a manual opening, uh, center shade. And that's nice. It is, uh, you have two switches here, one for like tilt, one for opening. If you want to slide, it slides in. It doesn't go over the top, which is nice. And if I close that, just one button press, and then I can tilt it up if I want to do that. So, and right now I'm rocking uh, Apple CarPlay plugged into the USB-C, USB-A port, and it's giving us a turn-by-turn -turn navigation. The unfortunate thing in this situation is even though I'm using Google Maps on Apple CarPlay, I'm not getting turn-by-turn -turn navigation on the center display. Some companies have that figured out, some companies don't, and it is most likely an Apple, Google thing than it is a Google built-in thing. Um, let's just make a left turn here. So I wish that that could have been the case. Um, that would have been nice. Because that way, if someone wants to change their uh, their menu, its screen, they uh, they want to pull up here, music, whatnot, I can still have turn by turn. I don't miss out on that, um, which will be really annoying, you know. All right, guys. So we just ought on a, a trail right now. It says rough road ahead. We're gonna get into off road mode on the center screen. We gotta keep in mind of bikers and stuff. Um, again, this is the Denali trim, so it's not like an everyday occurrence for someone who wants like a luxury canyon. But you're getting a canyon, so you do want something that's more, you know, adventurous. So. Off the bat though, this is not on air down tires. This is on those 20 inch wheels. Oh, and uh, it is it is stiffer, but honestly, it's not like anything crazy. It's very manageable. I feel pretty confident right now, just going on this light trail. I don't think it's anything crazy right now. I haven't done any obstacles. We'll be seeing that more when it comes to the AT4X uh, in the next 
you have seen this video, check out that video, I'll have that up, hopefully afterwards, or before, so. Uh, the nice thing is this is a new car, so nothing's like rattling and shaking and falling off. We got some bumps here. Oh. Okay, not, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, again, I'm not like a veteran off-roader or anything. I've done some light trails with some some expert guidance, but that's the extent of my experience. Um, and I think an off-road mode, which is what we're in right now, it'll let you uh, go at, you know, moderate speed. And I'm in, a, I believe I'm in two high right now, yeah. So I can like get on it. It'll bring the rear out a little bit, you know. Pretty manageable. I, I, I think you don't need four, I'm not even gonna be in a four wheel drive for this right here, you don't even need it. Uh, two wheels is just fine. And uh, yeah, you got more than enough torque to get you through most things. And if you need the, the four high, the four low, you have those at your disposal. But for this guys, it's really a, really fine. It's really simple. Nothing too complicated. I wish there was the like a, a sport mode on this. That would have been nice. Let's slow down here. A uh, sport mode would have been nice because I feel like the throttle sometimes is just, it takes a little bit for it to recognize you really want to get on power, and uh, it takes some time for it to downshift to those uh, lower gears. So. Yeah, we're back in off-road, we're gonna go. Terrain mode is more for like that one pedal driving. You have to be a four high for that. And that's really those earlier modes. I like went through them like three times. So let's stay in off-road here. I don't see anything here show, indicating the center screen what, what mode I'm in. I wish that was a thing, that'd been nice. And then maybe you can have an option to turn off that center screen. Cause it's nice at first, but I feel like if you wanna like toggle back and forth and it keeps interrupting your center screen, that'd be a little annoying, so. All right guys, so overall, as, as far as like this light trail experience in the Denali Canyon, um, like I said, we didn't do anything intense here. This is pretty normal stuff. Um, but overall, the truck handled really well. I didn't even like need to get into four wheel high or four wheel low for this. There is no transfer case on this, or no, sorry, there's no locking differential on this. So I wouldn't feel the need to engage that even on this truck, but that's not the point. It's more luxury, uh, more refinement. And you really feel that on the interior. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.